and your mom runs out and starts beating the f out of people, yelling at people. How many? How many people have you killed? So far, five. If you are uncomfortable right now, it's about to get worse. That is. So so creepy. I have a special feature for you today. This comes from a channel called Brandon FM. And I was actually blown away by the production quality. I mean, dude, we got people on YouTube that are killing it harder than Netflix right now. I mean, I was so blown away by Brandon's work and I call it work because this is a freaking documentary. I mean, he did a full investigation dating back to, I think, April. He was collecting clips. He did interviews. It's really wild. And what was he doing? Exposing a virtual reality cult. What is that? Exactly, right? We're on the same page. I had to know. Now, I watched this on my Twitch stream and I wasn't planning on uploading it, but after I watched it, a bunch of people from my channel went to Brandon's channel and they were like, yo, this, this is good. You know, like this is real good. And you know, he ended up reaching out to me and I was like, dude, this is real good. I was like, can I, you know, can we make a little exchange? And can I put this on my channel? And he's like, yeah, this is great. So. Here we are. I really focus on letting Brandon tell the story at first because he did an awesome job. But as we get deeper into it, I give you a little bit more of the commentary from me that you're used to. This is a pretty long video. You can listen to it, you can watch it, you can listen to it first and then go back and watch it later. But seriously, this blew my mind. Brandon, thank you for your hard work. Y'all gotta watch this. The idea of a cult functioning purely online is nothing new. However, whenever one is discussed, it's usually just an internet mystery with speculative evidence. Numerous well-crafted videos have been made on the topics of virtual cults. In fact, if we look at the top comment on the video, Cult in a Dead MMO by the YouTuber Nexpo, we can see that user KAP111 commented the following. Imagine looking back on VRChat in the next 20 years and realizing there were cults in there as well. Mm -hmm. It was only a matter of time before online cults pierced through into the virtual reality sphere. And today, I've decided to fast track that 20 year expectation all the way to 2022 and show you what I believe to be the first documentation of a cult that lives in virtual reality. And this time, it's not just a theory. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your seatbelt fastened while the seatbelt sign is on. Well, you know what? Since we're watching Brandon's lovely video, I will leak this here. It says this video has been censored due to YouTube's guidelines, but if you'd like to see the uncensored version, you can find it on patreon.com slash Brandon FM. Brandon, thanks for putting out a free version for us. Eu quis amar. I want to mention this. I listened to this video while I was cleaning the other day. I actually haven't seen probably about 50 minutes of this word. So actually, I'm kind of actually watching this along with you for the first time. I'm kind of excited, actually. I have a lot of commentary about this because I was thinking a lot of shit while I was listening to it. Mas o amor sabe um segredo. O medo pode matar o seu coração. Before we go any further into this elaborate rabbit hole, this we first need to Hello, stop Brandon. for just a small ad break. Oh. As so Sorry, I gotta skip through your ad, Brandon. What? My name is I'm 16. However, at 15, I was Former a member cult of member? a virtual reality cult. I ended up joining the Dark Guild from a school friend who vaguely told me that bad things were happening on the server. So I initially went there wanting to take down the server from the inside. However, that thought would inevitably change over time. Huh. In the beginning, it felt cool to join a server with the main goal of getting it shut down, almost like, uh, almost like a James Bond or undercover cop. But okay. in hindsight, I was way too over my head. I'd say if I'm being honest, my first impressions of the Dark Guild were kind of nice. 13? I mean, I genuinely enjoyed my time there, but as time went on, I slowly realized what type of 13? place it really was. My name is Theo. I'm 13 years old. However, I was 12 when I joined the Dark Guild. 
My first impression of the guild was that it was a bit silly. A sort of strange roleplay that Alyssa was doing with a bunch of people on a Discord server. Alyssa! I met Alyssa a while ago. Sometime last year, I was in a world with one of my friends when all of a sudden there she was. We got talking and that's essentially how it all started. I ended up joining the Dark Guild after Alyssa 16. proposed it to me and told me a little bit about it. It was basically like a small friend group where we could offer support to one another and chat. Just like a normal Discord server, I guess. Alright. Uh, if I'm going to tell this, I best to tell this from the start. Um, this is Alyssa. It actually started... On the 12th of March, oh. I was contacted by someone who claimed that they were a former member oh. of a VR cult. Although I was extremely doubtful of what this person was claiming in their message, I thought it was worth a call. And after we were done speaking, I was a lot more confident in their story. So I started my deep dive into what I believe to be the first ever real virtual reality cult. Now, with that being said, since I'm treading into uncharted territory here, let's first answer the question of what, what are a cult's intentions? intentions? First of all, a cult doesn't have intentions without its leader. Charles Manson, David Koresh, Jim Jones, and Marshall Applewhite all became the face of the message they were preaching. A cult leader is treated like Jesus within the confines of their members. Their words are taken as gospel and they follow a strict set of beliefs usually outside of what the average person would perceive as normal. But how do you get an average person to believe in extremist things? Especially when he those people really good have been here. wired a certain way ever since they were born. The, the simple, simple answer, answer is, is you, you just, just start, start the, process the process of rewiring. Dude, the editing was good in this. Let's put it, it this way. way. This, this is, is the, the color, color brown. brown. That's what you and I have both been taught our whole lives. Now one day, you wake up, and suddenly, everyone around you is calling this color green. After enough time has passed, and everyone around you keeps telling you that this color is in fact green, you too will start incorporating it into your vocabulary. Therefore, you will also start believing it as a fact. And who, who knows? knows? Maybe, Maybe it is. But either way, your brain has just- Not only is social engineering not that hard, but some people unconsciously want to be controlled because they're used to being controlled. They don't know how to lead, they certainly don't know how to lead for themselves, and they feel more comfortable when someone else is telling them what to do. So also, these people that lead these type of organizations, they're very aware of what type of person they're looking for and who will follow. Been rewired to associate the word green with this color. Let's take it a step, step further. further. Let's say all your life you grew up in a religious household. You believe Jesus is 100% real because your entire family has told you that your whole life. Uh -oh, then deep you move out at 21, start hanging out with a group of atheists, and suddenly, after a few months, your brain starts to warm up to the idea of there being no god. You have just been rewired. Humans are naturally programmed to adapt to their environment. And when you get into a fully immersive environment that has cult ideologies, you will try to conform. We naturally want to conform, and we're disappointed when we don't fit in. The two examples I gave are extremely harmless. The difference between those types of brain rewirement and a cult is that a cults are usually a lot more extreme. Murder, sacrifices, suicide, and ex are just a few of a myriad of things a cult leader might want to rewire a member's brain to think should be accepted. So, although answering a question like might be easy, Answering why they might have those intentions is the equivalent of asking why a serial killer murdered a dozen people. There's never a logical reason or conclusion besides because they wanted to. That's what makes them so terrifying, and that is why almost every leader of a huge cult has turned into a pop culture icon. 
Because people want to understand. Why? Why did they follow because you? Because I'm in the soul. I'm no. in the fist. What does that mean? The fist, the family of the infinite soul. No. I think the intentions of the Dark Guild were to, I guess, grow, expand more. Essentially, so they had like connections everywhere with everyone. And Alyssa often said that she would stop anyone who got in her way. The guild wanted to start operations where they would kill and kidnap criminals like drug dealers, bank robbers, and such. Alyssa often said the point of the Dark Guild was to kill the bad people, like etc. I mean, it was advertised as a group for doing good. The people that spent the majority of their- Now, I just want to say, I'm not talking too much right now because the video's good, obviously. The editing's great and they're laying it down. I think some part around here, when we get to Alyssa Afton, I got some stuff to say, but I'm just letting you know. Time in there really thought that Alyssa was capable of killing people and believed that she had killed people due to her claiming that she had in the past. It, it was like... Oh yeah, yeah after I, I, I see, y'all are on. I believe Alyssa did really desire power and control. I remember once in a call she spoke of eventually moving from Discord to physical. Then once everyone was together, she wanted to use them to kill people, such as like drug dealers and murderers. She made it very clear that anyone working for the government that tried to stop or monitor it would just be taken out as well. I think this just shows how deluded she really is. But yeah, she would always have these sort of crazy ideas. So how does a cult function in VR? Is a VR cult less extreme than one that might exist in the real world? Or is it possible for a VR cult to reach the same extremities as one of the most notorious cults in history? A cult like Arm Shinrikyo. To answer Dude. that, we need to veer slightly off track for a second and go back to the heart of Japan in the year 1987. And I just want to be clear, he's going to go through the story of Aum Shinrikyo, but something to think about. The leader of Aum Shinrikyo is somebody that felt like they were wronged by society. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I'm not sure if he was like publicly humiliated or something. Somebody that's publicly humiliated will have a general vengeance for society a lot of times, but something happened to him and then he used vulnerable people to do his bidding to get back at society. That's all this was. But he's going to go into detail about it too. Not only to understand how tragic a powerful cult can be, but also so we have an understanding of how cults worked in a time where technology wasn't so advanced and people weren't living their lives through a headset. Wait, also, I see a lot of people that are commenting and saying that this is really good. I'm gonna drop the link really quick. Literally leave a comment on Brandon's video and say, because the more we comment on his stuff or engage with it, it helps boost it a little bit in the algorithm. And I mean, I have a lot of respect for what this creator did because this was a full investigation they did over a couple months. Not just research, but they got in and they got their hands dirty and we're gonna watch some of that footage. But yeah, make sure you leave a comment to kind of help boost their video and whatnot too. Subscribe, whatever it may be. Netflix got some competition. But unfortunately, most of the people that joined the group were not yet aware of Shoko Ashihara's true intentions. After a few years, the cult had set up a facility in the middle of nowhere to develop sarin gas, a deadly fume that was famously used in World War II. However, the cult had no desire to use it on any conflicting country. They were going to use the gas on their own people with the intention of overthrowing the Japanese state and starting the Third World War, the first move in a chess game that would end up with them. If you haven't in full heard of control. this and you want to look at the it later because he's just using this as reference, it's called the Sarin Attacks in uh, Japan. Interesting thing is, it wasn't just misinformed people that joined the organization. Some of the most educated people in Japan became infatuated with Shoko's ideologies. Not because Shoko had figured out the true meaning of life, but because he was a master manipulator at making people believe he had. And I just want to say this again. Somebody joining a cult, it's not because they're dumb. They're vulnerable. You can have a master's degree and be vulnerable. In fact, I would argue that there are some people with high-powered careers that are more stressed, depressed, and vulnerable than ever. And once again, like I said, if you grew up in a home with a highly manipulative mother 
a parent, you know, whatever, you probably are attracted to manipulative people. It feels comfortable to you. It feels safe. It activates your attachment styles. So somebody can be a Harvard graduate and still fall susceptible to somebody like this, especially if they had a narcissistic parent and now this person reminds them of home. Very, very easy. And it was through that attribute that Shoko had gained an immense amount of power to carry out the biggest terrorist attack in Japanese history. So on the 20th of March, 1995, a senior medical doctor, three physicist graduates, and other cult members carried out an attack on three of the subway lines running through Tokyo, Japan, releasing a deadly amount of onto thousands of passengers commuting to their destination. 14 people died and over a thousand were injured. It was rush hour when the sarin gas began to spread through Japan's subway system, released from plastic bags onto five crowded trains, deemed the worst act of domestic terrorism in Japan's modern history. Two months later, Japanese authorities arrested Shizuo Matsumoto, a man better known as Shoko Asahara. Asahara predicted that Armageddon would occur Wait, in the 1990s and told his followers that they would create a new world. By the time of the Tokyo subway attack in 1995, the cult had 10,000 followers in Japan and some 30,000 in Russia. Devotees included doctors and engineers who produced the chemical weapons used to carry out the group's crimes. While Asahara built himself on charisma, he spoke little during his trial, muttering incoherently without ever explaining his motivation. He was sentenced to death in 2004, along with 12 followers. Asahara's cult eventually disowned him. I'd say the main ages of the guild ranged anywhere from like 13 to 30. That's my guess anyway. The guild's age range was mainly between the ages of 12 and 17, but there are older people too. However, a lot were few and far between. The Dark Guild was definitely a cult. It had all the traits of a cult. People followed Alyssa and listened to everything she said without question. Uh, anyone who spoke against her was dealt with. So over time, the words that came out of Alyssa's mouth became the guild's gospel. Yeah, some of the normal conversations that would typically go on in the Dark Guild text chats would be or like ERP for short, or just like asking other people how their days are going. It was, it was quite a, a wide range of things, I'd say. Most conversations that took place in the text and voice chats of the Guild were about sex and how Alyssa was. A cult's power comes from the manipulation of the human mind, and it is a lot harder to do that when the mind has access to an infinite amount of information at all times, which is why cults usually limit access to certain parts of the internet and keep all of the members on a tight leash. But nowadays, that's a lot easier said than done. So how is it possible for a cult to be purely based online, let alone in virtual reality? Well, from the one that I've been investigating, I can say at least in this particular case, the cult leader used emotional manipulation a lot more than informational. This is because nowadays, people form emotional connections a lot easier because of technology, especially virtual reality technology. Wait, somebody said, this is very disturbing to me. I mean, but don't you wanna know what's going on? I could see this stuff happening, but I think it's important to know that it really does happen. It's very important. Some of you guys probably run into the people that are in these groups on Discord. You run into them on TikTok, you run into them on Twitter, and maybe you need to be the friend that says like, yo, what are you doing? And also, I just wanna be very, very, very clear. If you are uncomfortable right now, it's about to get worse. You guys remember the uh, the Isabella Janky video that I showed you with the girl that was like letting her like fingernails rot off and she was like super transphobic and she was like, like her rat, all that stuff. <laughs> hey, I told y'all that video got worse and it sure diddly do right did, didn't it? So just a heads up. So with, with that, that being, being said, said let, let me introduce you to the, to the Dark Guild, a cult that primarily operates on two digital platforms, VRChat, and Discord, 
almost all of the members were recruited into the Discord server through VRChat, which is where the cult would have the majority of its activities. For those who aren't aware of what VRChat is, it's essentially a virtual reality socializing game for 13 year olds and above. However, there is a wide variety of people who play this game, but the people who usually sing also, the most- Also, I just wanna be clear, not everything in VR chat is like this at all. That's why there's a whole basically documentary made about this because it's an abnormal pocket of VR chat. So just because somebody uses VR chat does not mean that they're in an in internet sex cult. Okay, I just wanna say that real quick. Most time into this vast virtual sandbox are players with social anxiety in the real world. Which is also why, unfortunately, countless predators use it as their go-to service for gr- Uh, this is a disturbing story. <laughs> uh. <laughs> One thing that VRChat does extremely well is simulating a real conversation from your home. Facial expressions and body movement all add to the feeling that you're actually talking to a real person. In your average video game, this is something that you just don't get very often. And most of the time, it just feels like you're talking to an NPC in a voice chat rather than a real human being. The byproduct of this fact is when you're in VR, it's a lot easier to develop an emotional connection with someone. In fact, it's easier than ever before in the history of the internet. After my conversation with the former cult member, it was just a matter of time before I would have to join the Dark Guild myself. But before that, I would need to gather other previous members to get a better understanding of everything that happened within the cult. But most importantly, get a better understanding of Alyssa Afton, the leader of the Dark this Guild. This is Alyssa. Yeah. Get ready. Cause I'm about to expose myself so for you guys that aren't clear, Alyssa uses she pronouns. Alyssa was very sexually active with me. She wanted me to go visit her in real life so that she could have sex with me. She would also ask for ERP and jerk videos, and every time I used to say no, she used to get angry. Which That's a child. Which felt like each time I was being backed into a corner. Yeah, I mean, I guess at some point, Mine and Alyssa's relationship did become sad. She would constantly try to flirt with me and offer to ERP, even after being told my age several times. I was very close to Alyssa, uh, to the point where she thought we were in a relationship. Since I was 15 at the time, I found- Somebody is asking, what does Alyssa identify as? And well, or something, something similar to that. I'll say that Alyssa uses shoe pronouns, but I would prefer not to put this person in any category of people because I don't think any category of person wants Alyssa. Let's labels off and just watch it. On comfort in knowing an older person could feel those feelings towards me. I felt like I always had something to do when I was with her. Whether Nobody it just be chatting Alyssa, on call so. or playing video well, games, just... I ended up developing a codependency with Alyssa. Yeah, um, Alyssa was uh, involved with, with multiple minors. I never understood why everyone was okay with it, but I've heard Alyssa often say, it's not illegal if both sides agree to it. Alyssa is so, over 18. I, don't know, I guess everyone just believed her when she said that. Which I know sounds weird, but I don't know. It just wasn't questioned too much. Alyssa Afton grieved me, and she has had some experiences with a lot of my friends who were under 18 years old. The mental scars this whole experience has put on my mind are so extreme that I was recently diagnosed with Stockholm Syndrome. Which is why I found myself going back to seek comfort in Alyssa's presence after breaking out of the cycle so many times. Probably because, like I said, this person... Look, you guys know sometimes when you're watching my stream, yes, I do go off into assumption world, but I do not believe that some people just wake up one day and say, I'm gonna have a strong relationship with a manipulator. I think that they previously had a person in their life that was a manipulator. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was one of their close first best friends. Some of you guys have had that before, a very narcissistic best friend that just kind of 
brings you around to follow them around and you get addicted to that relationship pattern, you know? So this person's saying that they knew it was bad and got away and then craved that relationship again. I, I mean, I believe it makes sense, you know? And it's, it's not their fault. It was so normalized for Alyssa to have relationships with minors in the bubble that we lived in. It got to the point where she would have a ceremony marrying some of the underage guild members in front of everyone. Looking back, it's... And for these underage guild members, when there's multiple of them, let's say there's like 50 or 100 or something, to them, this isn't pedophilia. This is being picked. And they celebrate that. This is like literally cult programming. Also, as a parent, if I found out that somebody over 18 was having sexual conversations with my child over Roblox and I went to the police, would they take it seriously? I really don't know. Should they take it seriously? Absolutely, 100%. I don't even think we're in a spot where authorities would take VR chat sexual grooming seriously. That's literally why after I saw this video this weekend, I was like, oh, we're watching this on stream. It seems so inappropriate, but when it just keeps happening, I guess you just sort of get used to it. Oh wait, let me read this. The footage you're about to watch of Alyssa Apton is not recent footage. Some of these videos were even filmed when she was still in school. Alyssa, it, nope, we're not even gonna, nope, she's not in any community. She's I'm not. As hell. I don't think I can get this correct, but it's, it's worth trying. So, yeah, here I go. Wise men say. I literally punched him directly in his stomach, bend down, punch him in the face, hit down, and I just kept stomping on his chest. I'll get back with you once I get my damn food, because I'm going to go on my VR set and watch some scary shit, so. I, 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 once again, I talked about this in the beginning of the stream. Sometimes people like creepy things. They like looking at violent, you know, videos, or they like sometimes just true crime. They like that eat that uneasy feeling because they grew up in a chaotic household where they were always uneasy. So that uneasiness feels comfortable to them. And I'm just gonna keep dropping little notes about why I believe that Alyssa grew up in a very chaotic household. And keep in mind, once again, y'all know I'm not excusing this bitch, but I like to talk about these things so that we understand them so we don't get caught up in them and our friends or family don't get caught up in them either. Didn't do. Some people who were in a situation where they were completely powerless and taken advantage of, and it's very possible that somebody took advantage of Alyssa at a young age, which is why she's replicating the behavior. Once again, not excusing, just explaining. It's a thing that happens. When people, sometimes as children, feel powerless and afraid. As adults, they try to come into their power by making people afraid of them. They believe that they are tarnished. They believe that they're bad and that everyone's gonna leave them anyways. Well, if they start embodying that scary, violent person, then they feel in control of why everyone's leaving them. And so that's why I think Alyssa has a lot of, not violent behaviors, but she likes to talk about her violence because it scares people. And that fear that she's holding makes her feel powerful unlike when she was a child. And honestly, it's embarrassing. Three to four people so panic against a damn stall, one against a brick wall, and one against the um, sink inside the bathroom. I am very surprised none of them would snitch. And I'm very surprised none of them had to go to the hospital. There's a reason I don't fight because I can literally be a danger to society if I fight. I don't need no weapon. My weapon is my hands. That's something that somebody says when they're so angry that they just believe that they're a force. And I get it, man. People that are in fights that are passionate, they could do some damage, but you're not as scary as you think you are. Just a very strange thing to say. And I tend to keep myself calm because if I keep fighting, I'm gonna end up being a sociopath. I'd rather be a collected, civilized person and fight when I need to. Now that I'm outside of school, believe me, someone tried me, no one's gonna stop me. Anyway, yeah. that's just me. We know you're crazy. 
Alyssa, we get it. You're crazy. It's because you're hurt. That's all it is. It's like people try to put up this big front, like, yeah, I'm scary. I'm big. I'm powerful, blah, blah, blah. But underneath that is just an extremely hurt person. Like, that's it. And your anger is your inability to properly soothe that hurt child. Well, that was me. Adios. After I received my invite into the Dark Guild from someone volunteering to help out, I asked everyone I had spoken to to leave if they haven't already. And just like that, I had been Trojan horsed into the server, burned the evidence, and now it was finally time to meet Alyssa. After introducing myself in the Dark Guild text chat, Alyssa seemingly took a liking to me quite quickly. An important thing to know is that I joined on my burner account which stated that I was only 15 There's cry years baby. old. Hi, cry baby. Anyway, after a short time of me being That's, in the general don't say text sorry. chat, it's okay. I was granted I'm just the co-moderator you know. role out of nowhere. The former members were shocked that I had gained a list of trust. Okay, and also, trust. sorry, let me just say what's going on here really quick. Brandon, the creator of this video, created a Discord account and a new identity to join the Dark Guild. Brandon's going full, not only is this awesome editing, Brandon's going full investigative journalist here. So quickly, and things would only escalate further the following day on the 27th of March, when I would meet up with Alyssa and some other members of the Dark Guild in VRChat. On March 27th, Alyssa invited me to a world called Mansion Meridian, which was the main meeting point for members of the Dark Guild at the time. Upon joining, though, my alt account, uh, there were a few kids that greeted me at the front door. After a while of wandering around the mansion, I managed to find Alyssa, and this is where things start to get strange. Here. Hey, Alyssa. What the fucking hell is going on here? Machine gun! Oh, I'm Let's be real. Be honest. So just so you guys know, this is Alyssa talking. I want you to be able to hear the voice. I'm telling you, do not bite your tongue, okay? It's about me. Don't hold back, all right? This is just so you know about me, okay? Everyone who knows that I am a bitch sometimes, please raise your Everyone who knows I can be very rude at times. Keep your hands up. She's talking to a bunch of children. Everyone who knows that I'm still there for people, but I, I have to say it how it is. Hands up. Shortly after that strange introduction, I was invited to a private room in the mansion with Alyssa and her then 15-year-old boyfriend at the time. I don't, I don't think the one who, wait, who was the one who recruited you? Um, it was your, it was your friend. Uh... Ah, who is sitting here by Okay. Yo, that one, I can leave. You following me, remember. Come on. Oh, oh, come on, Safin. Well, how much of my guilt did I tell you about? It's not a gaming place. It's someone we can just chill with. Because if you want to recruit a person, let's be honest here. You don't want to walk a person, but like, hi, you want to join my guild? What's it about? You tell them about. They say yes. And then you shake hands, get them ready, be like, okay. That person will walk 500 feet and never to again. So social media is here to help me. And you know the kid not having kisses that cops give up upon two months in? In other words, we are there to go ahead and find the people, bring them home. We might have to go ahead and kill people if we're, um, we get you a contract zone. You choose either you're behind the scenes or on the field. Behind the scenes is just like doctors, trackers, you get the point. On the field, we're dealing with the issue. We're finding the person. So we're... he's saying also, I'm sorry, she's saying also that there's people in mobilized roles too. They have doxers. They have trackers. I mean, she's assigned all of these children a role that gives them purpose, but it's just to do her bidding to keep more control over the group. <laughs> we're gonna do what we have to do. Either we kill them or jail them. 
And is um, the government on our side? Yes, by law. Self-defense in full effect. I do have a question. When you say killing, does that mean like actual killing? Or is that role play? I don't role play about my guilt. So I know you might be scared to kill an actual person. It's up to you. I know for a f sake I'm doing it again. <laughs> it's too f fun. How many how many people have you killed? So far five. Lewis has said they kill five people. Little fear mongering, huh? Little fear mongering. After that uncomfortable exchange, Alyssa started to talk about her personal role within the guild, along with information about her love life. I'm the leader. Yeah, on Fortnite, husband. maybe. Um, he goes by the name, but right now he's at um, like a boot camp, discipline school, whatever. The um, until June, and this is my boyfriend over here. It's kind of an open thing. Uh, um, is that what them people? Sorry, listen, listen to this again. I'm the leader. My husband, um, he goes by the name, but right now he's at um, like a boot camp, discipline school, whatever. The um, until June, and this is my boyfriend over here. It's kind of an open thing. Uh, um, an open relationship with a child. Is that what them? He's not able to share himself with no one. Um, a one-sided open relationship with a child. This sounds crazy. This, I mean, this all sounds crazy, but it's really happening and it's actually up. When I got into this, I was like, oh my God. But I'm thinking about this from like a mental place. If you're 12 years old and you get into VR chat, you become involved romantically with a leader of a group that you look up to and they say, ooh, you're, you're my boyfriend now. And we're in an open relationship because I'm allowed to talk to people, but you can't talk to anybody. And let's say that relationship actually actually goes on for six months. At 12 years old, your first relationship is an online relationship with a manipulative person that you're not allowed to talk to anyone else, but you're only allowed to, you know, do something with them. That's gonna f you up for life. It just is. It, it sounds so simple because it's internet, but it really is gonna f you up for life. In the middle of the conversation, the kids from downstairs came up to ask Alyssa if they could leave and go to a different VR world. I'm sorry, but when the last time I checked that you had authority of anything? Oh no, I was not gonna check for the authority. I was checking <laughs> if we could go. That's checking for authority, dumbass. This is why we call him okay. a dumbass. Can I drop a portal to where only I mean, the four of us can go through? We don't give a no, shit. no, and no. After the kids went back downstairs, Alyssa continued her ramble. Sometimes you might join me, you might see, hear me ERPing. So. That's more of the culty thing. Three people come up and ask for permission about something. They get told no, and then they obey. It's kind of like what the narrator was saying before about like them saying like, well, this is what I think green is. And then all these people are telling me green is this. You just kind of fall in line. Please be careful when you join. You don't want me to hear? ERPing is erotic role play. I mean, it's up to you. I then started to ask more about the contracts that needed to be signed in order for me to be a formal member of the guild. That's right, Alyssa was making the children sign contracts. Uh, well, this is crazy. the whole contract thing, like, I'm ready to sign a contract, you know? Uh, I just want to help. Give me just a moment. It doesn't mean it's, it's no, it's far from no, it's a yes, but please. I have to go ahead and... I have so much excitement just hearing that. But please give me a bit, okay? Wait a This is the quickest this shit ever happened. You know me, I have a four month wait. He automatically wants to join fully. Like fully. Making them feel special, like, oh, you know, everyone else has to wait weeks or months. We're gonna let you join in early. This would this would make somebody want to sign that contract a little bit faster. They don't want to be left out. Um, okay, let's get you inside the guild, I guess. I then proceeded to sign a contract on Google Docs that made me an official member of the Dark Guild. <gasps> I, blank, hereby put myself in the Dark Guild owned by Alyssa Afton, founder 
uh, blah, 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 and something Afton. I also acknowledge that once I sign, I'm part of the guild for life and their problems are my problems and mine are theirs. Doing that whole family mentality. I mean, this this really preys on people that were born into abusive households. Reactivating the family dynamic, painting a picture of a new family. Like it, it activates that attachment style by having the manipulative person as a leader, but then it makes them think they have an opportunity to heal it by offering that family dynamic. Like, no, this time it's going to be better. This time we have your back and they have our, this is what a family is supposed to be. I put my life and soul with the Dark Guild. I will participate in yearly guild games once announced by the leader. I also understand my leader is working hard to make us happy. I also certify I've been in the guild for four months and understand the leader's ways. I will use my brain and time to help find others so there something can have some closure. I also understand at some point I will start getting paid once evidence of my work and knowledge is done. With this, I hereby put myself blank in the dark guild on this date. We go ahead and exit the tab now. Welcome to the guild. Welcome. Signed. J just just to double check uh my age doesn't matter right because i know sometimes when i try and join groups like they kick me out because of my age sometimes age doesn't matter he's same age and i'm dating him. he's he's how old he's 15. see Alyssa's 15 year old boyfriend left the world to go to bed and then Alyssa started trying to get me to erp okay fine i can go ahead and get this out of my chest hey so what's he doing Hmm? So, what you wanna do? Uh, I don't know. What do you wanna do? That depends. Are you up for anything? You mean like ELP? Yeah. Hmm. Can we do it tomorrow? I will say no because I got, you know, I'm like super horny. Like, so. And I gotta be that real quick. And it usually only takes about five minutes, so not like a 12 thing. This is why I said I'm not clarifying any community or whatever that Alyssa is part of. LGBTQ, no. No. We don't want her. She can go somewhere else. I then explained that it was too late in the night and that I had to go to bed. After a few minutes of convincing, Alyssa backed off from the idea of ERPing. Once again, as a reminder, ERPing is exotic roleplay. And just to give you a nice little recap of exactly what happened a few minutes before that was it said Alyssa's 15 year old boyfriend went to bed and then Alyssa said, well, now I can finally get this off my chest. So what do you want to do? Over the following weeks, I gathered all the evidence against Alyssa and reported it to Discord and CyberTip.org and the FBI tip line. The 15 year old boyfriend is no longer dating Alyssa after. Probably because Alyssa was cheating. After I left the world, Almost everything that the former members were telling me seemed to be true. Alyssa Afton was using VRChat to cultivate a group of children that believed and did everything she said. And in just under- Do you guys remember the Al Turbini story? Just a quick little recap. That was the train killer. When he was a child, when he was about 12 or 13, he used to go to work every single day and he would always get bullied by this other street kid. The child was homeless, but worked a job. And Al Turbini had a home, family, parents, whatever. Well, this kid started off bullying him and then ultimately ended up sexually assaulting him multiple times. And then one day when they were at the top of a train, this kid assaulted him and then threw him off the top of the train. His face was smashed in. His eye was kind of, his eye was like, it wasn't like a lazy eye, but it was like drifting. So what he ended up doing later in life was he raised an army of children and he was also sexually abusing them. He was also dating them, but I mean, they were all his little servants. These were street kids that didn't have any family, no homes or, or, or anything. They were vulnerable people and he was their leader how old was he late 20s or something like that like he was much 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 older leading around this band of 12 and 13 year old children and he would instruct them to assault other children and he was reenacting his trauma and al turbini also took his name from his initial abuser I, I i mean i believe Alyssa afton is basically doing the same thing rather than addressing that somebody hurt them and think of it this way sorry i'm doing the, i'm doing the thing again the annoying little self-help thing let's say there's two versions of yourself you guys have probably heard of like have you guys heard of inner child before i don't know google it i can't go into detail about it right now you know some people especially people that are victims of trauma they have this inner child in them right you know as we get older our role is to take care of our inner child your inner child is still in there 
you know, running the book, steering the wheel sometimes. When you get into a certain place, inner child comes out and just takes over and it just happens. And so as adults, our role here is to take care of our inner child. So let's just say there is a world where Alyssa was abused or sexually assaulted as a child. Now, as an adult, her adult self is protecting that child with anger. Now, imagine you're a little kid and, you know, something was wrong and you told your mom and your mom runs out and starts beating the f out of people, yelling at people, like assaulting people back, doing everything back. That child is not healed. That's not how you do that. That's what Alyssa is doing. Now, on the flip side, if you turn that, instead of, you know, putting that energy out into hating and being angry and doing all that, if you turn that love inward, what kind of, I, I can't, oh, this is, this is like so loaded. I hope somebody's understanding what I'm trying to say, but it's very hard to articulate what I'm trying to say. Basically, anger and vengeance is not how you take care of that wounded child. You have to turn it inwards and give that child love. Alyssa is very hurt and the way that she's going about this is not only hurting other people, but it's not doing anything for herself. 30 minutes, I had gotten her to confess that she was attracted to minors and that she had allegedly murdered five people. But despite me gaining her trust, after that conversation, I would never interact with Alyssa in virtual reality again, but the story is far from over. Now that I had signed the contract that bound me to the cult, it was time to dig up as much information on Alyssa Afton as possible. I started to plan out how I could get Alyssa's real phone number. Oh, so the shit. following day, I created a fake story about how I got into a fight at school and then got my PC taken away. I explained that the only way we could still communicate was through iMessage, and just like that, she gave me her number. For weeks, I went undetected, messaging the leader of the first virtual reality cult I had ever heard of, and I slowly started to understand how Alyssa's brain ticked. She kept telling me that she was there for me 24-7. She admitted to ERPing with the mole I sent in there to gain her trust, a mole who faked being underage. She even asked me for n photos. And then, oh my silence. God. Wait, we can trade from time to time? Jesus Christ, me dude. For n photos. And then, silence. Nothing. No message from March 31st to the 16th of April, 4.09 p.m. But then, at 4.010. Okay. okay. Update me. What's up? I proceeded to explain why I had been gone for so long. Lo and behold, she said she still has my back 24-7 until the day she dies. The guild is my family. The guild is my family. Do you need me to buy you anything? I'm your leader. Get used to it. I'm your family. I'm your family. Welcome to the family. 22 days later, I was no longer a part of the family. Oh, Alyssa messaged the person doing the investigation and said, Ahem, does Brandon FM ring a bell? I'm not going to be made a fool. <laughs> Too late, sister! A part of the family. Alyssa would often uh, threaten to kill people. I remember one time I had told some of the other members uh, about Alyssa's plans to kill criminals, which caused a few of them to leave. But after Alyssa found out that I had told- Wait, really quick. Someone said, if they were all 18 plus, would this be problematic? One in the chat, if you think it would still be problematic. Two in the chat, if you think it wouldn't really be problematic. Let me, let me say this. Well, first of all, what is problematic? God, I, I, I gotta be honest. <laughs> Sometimes I hate that word, because, but not because of the word itself, but because if you guys notice, it's used so blanketly sometimes now. Uh, but not in your case. Sorry, whoever asked that. That's not what I meant. There's a lot of people over 18 that do, you know, kind of join things like this. I think that the sexual aspect of it, if it's over 18, it's not like a huge deal. I think that the culty controlling part of it and having people sign contracts, it's like if you were to enter a Discord server and somebody made you sign a contract, that's sketchy and it's probably not good for your mental health. It's a false sense of community and security. It's just control under the guise of community, right? 
So it's it's emotional manipulation. It's not good for you and it's not good for that person. It literally, it does nothing except drag the person back into their past. Yeah, and I think another aspect of it is um, VR chat and stuff like this is really, really fun. It is. I've literally been gaming since I was like six years old. And then I found the internet and internet communities like Live Journal and like, you know, all these like rating sites like Hot or Not and shit. I started finding those things when I was like 12 years old. I've been like deep in internet culture for many years. And I would say like the peak of it was probably 10 years in. And I was on my computer for, you know, 18 hours a day. And it was the loneliest I've like ever been. Gaia people right here. It's your boy. Uh, Maple Story, all that. Like it was, it was, it's, I don't know. It's just not sustainable as you start to get older. So Hold them. She not I used to talk, dude, all the Tumblr kids, we're all grown up now. <laughs> it's a mess. Only threaten to take my life, but also the lives of multiple other people close to me. After that, I had a lot of trouble sleeping, and I was having a lot of panic attacks every day, wondering to myself, is this the day that Alyssa comes to my house? It really, really screwed with me mentally. Alyssa has threatened to kill people before, but the threats were usually made in a heated argument, and nothing would have really come from them. With that being said, I do believe she's capable of taking another human's life. I believe she's a violent person at heart. In fact, I remember one time she tried helping me develop Phantom Touch, which is essentially the ability to feel a sense of touch through VR. Just so she could physically abuse me without me being in the same room as her. And I know that sounds crazy. That's so creepy. That is so creepy. But that's just how her mind worked. She would try to figure out ways to do things she wanted to children from her bedroom without actually ever meeting them in real life. She wanted to be the boogeyman. I believe Alyssa is a horrid person. She manipulates young people who have no one else to turn to, and then she brags about being the result of someone else's demise, death, and trauma. She does not care for people around her, and is in a constant state of wanting more power and control. The whole Alyssa situation made me severely depressed, and it made me hate the world around me. Now because of it, I'm paranoid around people I meet online. I came out of that whole situation with severe trust issues, and I'm not sure when everything will go back to normal. I'm going to keep forgetting to say this. <laughs> Wait, I know we're in the middle of a documentary. No, I'll say it at the end. <laughs> On Saturday so the 21st oh, of wait. May, Alyssa Afton found out who I really was. Someone who was helping out with the investigation had unfortunately told Alyssa what was really going on. Many of the people I had worked with still clearly had some leftover loyalty it's about to towards con, so wait, okay. her, which is not their fault. It's simply just how they've been rewired. And while I didn't want her to find out who I was so soon, I thought this might be the last time I get to talk with Alyssa. This call did not go according to plan. Hello? Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I hear you a lot clearer now. Hold on. Um, a couple people contacted me. They said some pretty, um... Weird shit. Yeah. I know. You yeah. brought it to my attention. Yeah, so... I guess should we uh, talk about the weird shit? Yeah. It don't make no fucking sense. Okay. Well, let's start off with one that you can't deny, because I have recorded proof of it. You're a is, correct? Nope. There's no need to deny it. I still don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, well, when I joined, I said I was 15. And within about like an hour or so, you wanted to like ERP with me. You remember that? Still don't know. I think if if you want me to to sort of tell you what's been going on, I think like we need to start on some sort of honest ground. Or you can go ahead and uh, how I say. How I say? How you say? That's so corny. That is so f corny, bro. <laughs> By the way, the ending. This this uh, video has a really good ending. Trapped under the rubble of broken ceilings. Oh no. Okay, hold on. Let me just say, I told you guys. This video has a good ending. I just want to apologize about the random- SLAM POETRY! That we're about to- Should I just skip it? No. Well, 
Oh, I'm caved in and tired of living your life. How can I approach this religion with pride when I question everything that's written inside? They've been singing with joys and praise, but that tune don't ring the same. <laughs> At least to my Corky lover said skip. Knew there was a reason that distance would occur. This false reality had my vision in a blur. Had to take matters into my own hands. The truth is euphoric, I need more of it. Guys, be nice, like, KSI wrote this crazy, himself. Just don't blindfold me. Everything they call conspiracy connects with every inch of me. I'm not alone, I had to find my tribe. No longer have to hide disguise. Finally, someone I can trust in this maze. Lucy led the path, Thank no you. half hearts, just purpose and truth. Wisdom I'm given, the curtains removed. You made me aware of this matrix. She proposed we escape it. I don't know what this. I don't. No! Off all these people, they don't serve me. Turn off my phone because they spy and they observe me. I don't know who this part is for. I don't know who this part is for. Let's just skip it. Okay. All right, we're back. Everyone. <laughs> Dude, we're back. You want to know what I Googled? <laughs> I was absolutely going to do that, but this is what I Googled. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Everyone. I stuck around for quite some time in the Dark Guild. I'd say like around six to eight months probably. So yeah, quite a long time. I believe I joined the guild in August of 2021 and by February 2022 I had signed a contract that essentially locked me at, uh, into the cult. Or at least that was the idea. No, I, I didn't sign a contract, but I was offered to sign one to become the leader of what she called the European Sector. The European sector was part of the plan to divide the guild up into continents due to the growth within the guild. Being the leader of the European sector basically meant that you would have full control over your own separate server, dedicated to the Dark Guild members that were European. It also meant that you were obliged to send like this monthly report to Alyssa containing statistics, such as like most active members, suspicious individuals, uh, so on and so forth. I this think was the main year, reason Cry contracts baby. were there was so Alyssa could have like just another oh, form of leverage over people. And I think in a lot of cases it worked. But this was really my final straw. <laughs> it's when I decided to leave the guild. Like she was demanding I sign a contract and I just didn't feel comfortable with that. So I, I just left. I guess maybe the contracts are put in place so Alyssa could have full custody of you and your choices. Um... I mean, I don't really know since I haven't looked into it, but knowing Alyssa, it's probably something like that. She would use multiple types of manipulation on me, and the contract just seems like another one of those. Alyssa described it as bounding my soul to the guild to fulfill oh, my duty as a sector leader. The contract was only in place to move people up the ranks and You know what? So this is this is really funny. I it took me a minute to realize this. This is gonna sound absolutely insane but i'm just gonna tell you guys this when i was 16 or 17 i developed what i now would call discord voice but back then it was raid call voice and my boyfriend pointed this out to me later when i would get on voice chat servers because back in the day i used to play this game called crossfire there were no girls at all in this game if you were a girl people would either treat you curiously or kind of like shit you know and the way that i got around it was by sounding hot on the microphone and so people would automatically assume that i was hot and they would be nice to me and i realized that this is a fucking survival mechanism of being in the gaming world like over 15 years ago. And I, <laughs> I didn't know. I would like put on a certain voice so that people would be nice to me. I don't remember. Yeah, it's dude, it's so true. I don't know if anyone else has ever done that, but that is the thing. You can develop your Discord voice for safety. The internet's a little bit different now though. Children from leaving the cult as they don't really have the understanding to determine what contracts are legitimate or not. <laughs> the Dark Guild targeted lonely kids that wanted to make friends online using virtual reality. After they got comfortable within the group and made strong relationships with others their age, Alyssa Afton, a woman over the age of 20, started to groom and exploit them, convinced them to do everything she said and when they didn't, she would threaten s exile, 
and she used fake contracts to scare children into submission. Using these disgusting measures of entrapment, she cultivated the first virtual reality cult. Couldn't see the reason separation was apparent. This used to feel fulfilled and now this land is barren. The strongest bond turned to empty into- I'm gonna skip it. This is like if you're watching something with like your friend on the couch and you just let it play because you know it's awkward and then you just like look over at the- <laughs> I never knew where the name Alyssa Afton came from, but if I had to guess, it was probably inspired by Five Nights at Freddy's. The only thing I remember she said about where her name came from was something about a murder in the iconic Five Nights at Freddy's game. Yeah, I'm not particularly sure where the name Alyssa Afton came from, but I know that in the Five Nights at Freddy's games, there's a character called William Afton. Maybe there's some correlation there. The name Alyssa Afton didn't seem to just come out of thin air. A lot of the former members seemed to think that she had taken the last name alias from a popular video game, Five Nights at Freddy's, where a man in a purple suit called William Afton killed five children. And it's hard to look back on Alyssa's footprint and not draw out some parallels. Alyssa claimed that she had also killed five people, all the victims she abused online were children, and her last name comes directly from the man himself, William Afton. So, did Alyssa kill five people? Is she just trapped in a constant state of character, longing to become the purple man? Or is it all just a coincidence? I'm honestly not too sure. <sighs> well, that's the end of today's vlog. Me, my precious self, let me show you the others. Come on. Five Nights fan, dude. Foxy, and fun time, Foxy. I'm gonna set this back here. Says, bye. Alyssa was 15 when that was posted. For everyone asking, Alyssa is 21 years old. 15 year old husband, 13 year old boyfriend. Oh, is this a good part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So what Guys, now? here's the, the grand next? finale. It's currently the 6th of August, and this video is supposed to be out on the 12th. Ever since Alyssa hung up that phone call weeks ago, I've lost all entrances She's into the She's not in jail, guild, but... ...and lost all contact with Alyssa herself. At least, that was the case 12 hours ago. Since then, uh, just a few things have changed. Just a few. Um, so, let me just catch you up. In about five hours or so, every single text chat, voice chat, person, and role will be deleted from the Dark Guild. The entire Discord server will be left a barren wasteland full of nobody. And this will all happen while Alyssa is fast asleep. It's a sting <laughs> operation. It's hilarious. <sighs> what was I going to say? Do you wow. guys remember that very first person that sat down and did the little interview and said that they initially joined to try to infiltrate the guild and get it shut down? It's like, look, we know the authorities aren't going to do anything. So all we can do is, I don't know, try to protect other people online. Oh. Okay, let's get this rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. A potential emergency situation has arisen. This is the actual Discord! They're about to shut it down! Emergency landing. It's at 1 a.m.? They waited till 2 a.m.? To the following instructions. They're gonna delete the pedo Discord server! You can literally see the whole way we move chat. They're just deleting all the fucking channels. Somebody got access to being like an administrator and became trusted on the server. <laughs> And you guys know, look, if you got a Discord server and every member gets erased, every channel gets deleted, you gotta start from scratch and recruit thousands of people all over again. So this is this is the best they could do, and they did it. <laughs> I know, it is a good edit, isn't it, Iku? Good. Dude, 
You know Alyssa is fucking mad. Wait. What is this video that they posted? Oh, video isn't available anymore. Yeah, it was private. We all tried immediately. I guess this guy Ultra is the one that deleted the server. Let's fucking go, I guess Ultra! that is one downside of having a purely digital cult. One day, everything's fine. The next day, your admin gives the one person you don't want in the server the power to ban everybody and delete every single text channel. They banned now, with that being everyone said, too. Obviously, this will not get rid of Alyssa. She will just rebuild, make a new guild, maybe uh, fix the server that we completely broke. But hopefully, what this will do is raise awareness about the person she actually is. Hopefully, it'll convince a few of the guild members who decided to stick by her to finally click the block button. It's been a couple hours now since the guild got deleted, and already I've heard rumors about Alyssa putting a hit out on me. Okay. So, if I go missing, you, uh, you know who it is. Apparently, she's had a hit out on me since she found out who I was. And I'm still here, so Eric, I don't I'm gonna really link the video for you guys about. again. Definitely also, like Alyssa, like it for Brandon, or subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment and say top quality editing, whatever it is. You know, you always love a little encouragement. I uh, I know you're watching. Don't forget, I signed the contract that made me an official guild member until the day I die. So don't expect me to just abandon you anytime soon. You know. Oh, we we have to stick together as guild members, this, so I'm sure we'll meet again soon. Damn. Even more victims came forward. <laughs> no, no, no more slam poetry, Beck. <laughs> wait, wait, what happened? Alyssa has already begun her new cult on a fresh server. Oh my god, he immediately exposed this one too. The Iron Snake Guild... Morticia Coretta Afton. Morticia? I'm sorry. If you're paying tribute to Morticia Adams and <laughs> and Five Nights at Freddy's, I'm just not afraid of you. I'm not. I think I would die laughing. <laughs> I would stop there. Like, truly, truly. <laughs> like, oh my god, that's so So can a cult based purely in Goofy. virtual reality? cause as much pandemonium and media buzz as a cult like Arm Shinrikyo? In theory, yes. However, the chances are extremely slim. While VRChat can simulate real life better than any other technology, tricking rocket scientists and physicists into joining a cult on Discord doesn't seem very doable, especially with the internet being at everyone's fingertips. I thought this was an The ad. reason Alyssa was successful was in her ad. goal is because she targeted children with developing minds that were vulnerable. Which I think is the only way that you could convince thousands of people something as extreme as a cult set of beliefs <laughs> it's almost using done. a purely We're digital gonna move platform, into Diane down scroll hearing VRChat. after this and at the end of the day though, Om Shinrikyo Casey and Anthony. the Dark Guild are completely different, and comparing them would be disrespectful. However, one thing is certain. Shoko and Alyssa both achieved their goals through manipulation, lies, and rewiring of the human brain, which ended up traumatizing a lot of people. The main difference is, one of them did it through the heart of Japan, and the other did it from an Oculus Quest in their bedroom located in the state of Georgia. Damn. Oh. Sorry. So this is in the vlog. I am sorry if it's so short. I tried to make a longer one. I just got back to vlogging. But anyway, uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe now. And like if you dislike this. Skedaddle. All right? And share. Just, just, just so they know about me. I am such, such a good person. Unless you cross me the wrong way, then bitch, you're dead. But anyway, see you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to my Patreons for making this video possible. Thank you, Brandon FM. What a lovely video. Wasn't that nice? Mm.
mm, look at that. The video's over now. And now you're bored. Actually, I don't know if you are, but if you are, there are more videos on my Twitch channel. There's some that are like four hours, eight hours. That's where the YouTube videos come from. It's just like a longer extended live version. Or if it's Monday, I might also be live right now. I don't know. What day is it? Anyways, you should check it out. You, I mean, you can if you want to. You don't have to. 